Well, hello, Detroit. Welcome to Helen's Heavenly Delight. How have you guys been doing? I missed you guys last week, but I'm back again this week. We had a, a big snowstorm, and it was a lot of uh, streets that was blocked off and everything, and, and I couldn't get down here, But and they played a, a rerun for me. But I miss you guys so much. Merry Christmas, and God bless you. Now, let me tell you something again about myself. God told me that my hands are gold, and they are gold, because God has implanted something in me. He planted a seed in me, and I bake. I own my own company. I'm the CEO of Helen's Heavenly Delight, and I have five beautiful children, and I have four wonderful grandchildren and a wonderful husband, and I thank God for all of them. But when God plants a seed in your heart, I don't care what age you are, young, old, middle age, you have to get up and do this. Now, let me tell you something. I think I told you at the beginning of the show when I first came on that I submitted my business plan because I wanted to be down in the new center area. Now I'm waiting for that, and I know God is going to do what he promised me because he has never failed me, and he never will, and he will never fail you too. So keep your eyes focused on God, not the storm that you're in, but keep your eyes focused on God. And Matthew 33, 6, it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And that's, that's God's word. And, and Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, it says, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not into thy own understanding. And all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Now, I put on, I posted on my Facebook uh, some of my new desserts that I did. And I just did my pastor's birthday cake. And you have to go on and see that. It's really nice because I made it like a Bible with his favorite scripture on it, which is uh, Hebrews 12 and 14. But I'm so excited today because Christmas is coming up. But Christmas is every day. You know that. We celebrate Jesus every single day of our life. He's the air that we breathe. And when you think about when the, we are the temple of God, we praise God every single day of our life. We thank God every single day. And I'm going to tell you, Detroit, I am so grateful to just know God, to have God in my life. And I just praise him 24 hours a day. And I tell you once again, without a relationship with God, you have to have a relationship with God. You have to read the word. You have to. You have to pay your tithes. Because if you don't have that, you don't have anything. Because God loves us so much, he gave us the only begotten son. All of this, my baked goods and my hands of gold, I could not make wedding cakes. I could not do any desserts. I do everything. Wedding cakes. I do rolls. I do sweet potato pies, peach cobblers. I do an uh, assortment of cupcakes. I do uh, sweet rolls. I do everything that you can think of. I even make cakes out of uh, purses. I make telephone cakes. I do all of that because God has blessed me with this talent. And God has blessed you, too, with talents. Now, you have to get up and you say, okay, God, every day, God, what do you want me to do today that I didn't do yesterday? That's what I do. When I wake up in the morning, I say, Jesus, I love you so much. I thank you for a new day that i never seen before. Because without God, we can't do anything. But that's enough about me for right now. I want to tell you something about a special guest that I'm going to have after the break. She is wonderful. She's a delightful friend and a sister, and, and I thank God for her, too. Everyone has been on my show. You know, my pastor, he was on my first show, 
and my brother was on my second show, and my uh, first lady was on my third show, and we just had a good time. It's all about the promises of God, and every person that I have on my show is God tells me to have these people. I don't have these people on my show without God telling me to, because this show and every show is dedicated to God, because God is my life. He's not only the head of my life. He is my life. So we're going to take a, a 30 minute break and come back. And I'm going to introduce you to a delightful friend, sister, and my wonderful guest. So we'll be back shortly. Until then, remember, Jesus loves you. And so do I. Because when you least expect it, you are selected. You are a star. Smile. You are in Helen's heavenly delight. We'll be back shortly. Welcome back, Detroit, and that's a correction. I say I'll be back in 30 minutes, but I meant 30 seconds. But you know what I mean. I, I'm not as nervous as I was on the first show. So I'm getting better and better with you guys' prayers and help. And I thank God for, for all of my viewers. Now, a little information about my special guest. She's my sister, like I say. She's my friend. She's wonderful. I've been knowing her for over 35 years. She's a retired school teacher at Mason Elementary. She's a poet. She's a mother. And she tutors also. And I would like for you to welcome my very good friend and sister, Blanche Troop, welcome to Helen's Heavenly Delight. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm excited. Yes. yes, I'm excited to have you. Thank you. Yes. Now tell us something uh, uh, of, about yourself and how you became a school teacher and how God impacted your life. God has impacted my life to be a school teacher ever since I was a little girl. Oh, okay. I could remember coming home mm -hmm. from school mm -hmm. from kindergarten mm -hmm. and getting my dolls, Debbie, okay. and Connie, okay. and I would teach them everything that I had learned. Oh, wow. That's nice. And so it was just a, it was just a, whether or not I would be a teacher or a singer, okay. professional singer, and the Lord has led me to be a teacher. Praise God. When my sons started school, mm -hmm. I saw the need to go back to school. And Praise get God. into that system mm -hmm. and help our children to be successful. Well, praise God. And viewers, she can sing, too. Oh, yes, she's anointed, too. Now, tell me something about uh, uh, your... Uh, with your your you you have a website now to help children. Yes, I have a website to mm -hmm. help children. It's called Pencils and Paper. Okay. Skills to go. Okay. And that's Pencils and Paper Skills to Go at Gmail dot com. Oh, okay. Yes, and I also have a tutorial uh, service that I would be offering for children. Praise Give God. Give extra help. Yeah. Uh, my goal is to uh, grab those children in the early childhood. Uh, Praise age God. Because Praise that's God. what my specialty is. Okay. Early childhood education. However, okay. uh, I am interested in working with children who just need a little boost or they're not challenged enough. So uh, I also will have creative writing skills as well. Praise God. Yes. Well, listen, I know you have some... Uh, uh, some of your poetry, and I and I want I want you to read some of your poetry. And she also uh, uh, have some poetry on bullying too. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so uh, 
Tell, read us some of your your wonderful poetry. Okay. Yes. I okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Because I know that your your poetry is wonderful because you told me that you have a little poetry uh, that you wrote about me some years ago, and uh, I'm excited about that because I haven't heard it yet. So I said, oh, my God, I, I, I told my children, I said, oh, I said, Blanche has some poetry that she wrote about me, and I'm excited. I don't know the name of it, but I know it fits me well. Yes. And so, so, okay, tell us something about your poetry. Okay. okay. Uh, I, I have to um, first give thanks to, thanks to God. Yes, He's yes. My Lord and Savior. Yes, he is. And the first poem that I'm going to read okay. is, about people who feel hopeless. Yeah. And you may feel hopeless. Everyone doesn't feel happy around this time. That's true. That's true. And so the Lord gave me this poem in about five minutes, and I wrote it in 2003. Praise God. And I would like to share this with you. Sure. Oh, I'm excited. My restless soul. My restless soul. Up and down, round and round it goes. Should I go? Should I stay? As I watch the passing days. As I lay, I tell myself, you should be doing something more to keep your mind in store. Motivation, captivation, wishing to move ahead, yet still be there. I should be putting my best foot forward each day. Yeah, that should be the way. Instead, I lay and lay and lay. My mind is racing, my heart is breaking, or is it dormant as I drift, drift? Drift through another day. Get up, pump it up, keep moving ahead. For only the strong survive, I say inside as I wonder why I use daydreaming as an alibi to allow life to pass me by. Maybe I'm bored or maybe I'm confused, feeling bogged down and used. Excuses I make to explain the state that my mind is in. Wow, I need a friend. Christ is he who has died to make me free, free of being misled, while he encourages me to keep a straight head. It takes energy to be free, but so much less energy if you learn to lean on the me, which is he. Trust in me in everything you do, and I'll bring you through, through to the end, only so that you can learn to trust me all over again. For you see, you may feel confused, misused, and abused by life's trials and tribulations. I am he who can bring you through every situation. I chose you for salvation. So cheer up, get up, and do my will. Do what I say each day, regardless of how you think you feel. For it is then that you will find a peace of mind. Your soul would be at rest. For you belong to me, Jesus Christ, your Savior, your Lord, the best. Amen. That's beautiful. <laughs> I you. love that. Now, how long you been doing poetry? Um, I've been doing poetry since, uh, I would say, 1969. My first poem was uh, written about Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Really? And I was in uh, the seventh grade. Well, praise and the Lord God. gave me that poem as well. Oh, wow. Yes. That's beautiful. Now, I'm excited about the, the poem that you uh, wrote about me. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm excited. Okay. I'm excited. Yeah, because I know it's going to be good, you know. And, and I say, oh, my God, anytime someone does something for you, that means you're special in their eyes. And I thank God for the friends and, and the sisters that I have because God is awesome. He's a supernatural God, and I love him so much. And I, and I thank God for you, Blanche. I do. I thank, thank God you. for you. Thank I you. Do. you I thank God for our friendship. Yes. God put us together. Yes, he did. Now, let me hear my poem. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this poem was written, and we've been knowing each other for years. Yes, and over 35 it, years. I thought about you, and it just it just came upon mm -hmm. me. And it's also for those of uh, of you who are worried about 
what people say about you, mm -hmm. uh, the haters, as they say. Yes. Well, we have to keep in mind that they talked about Jesus. They sure did. You know, and Jesus mm -hmm. did not let that stop him right. for doing right. what the will of God said for him Amen. to do. Amen. So Amen. this poem is called Sassy. Mm. I'm impervious to your cutthroat ways. It doesn't matter to me what you say, what you think you see. Mm. I'm a child of the, of, of the master above. I'm about truth. I'm about hope. Hey, I'm about love. Yes. Your piercing, twisting lies move like a silver bullet. And I glide like a 747 in a cloud storm. I see right through it. That's me. You hide behind that slivery smile when you are near. The same smile that alarms me, Satan's here. Mm -hmm. You connive, you manipulate, you seek who you may devour. I dream, I caress, I stop and smell the flowers. Yes. You invite others who would keep your tales of me to keep you company. Yes. I'm aloof, I'm cool, calm, because your talk is irrelevant to That's me. That's me. <laughs> you wish to control, I simply stroll, to take that place where I should be. I sway into prosperity, serenity. I seek my destiny. Yes, Jesus. So why not keep your eyes on me as you speak your untruth? I'm confident I matter, and I must be important to you. Oh, that's And me. that was written in 2001. <laughs> <laughs> that's me. That's me. And I love the name. Yes. Sassy. Yeah. <laughs> That's me. That's lovely. Yes, yes. That's lovely. Now let's talk about um, how you tutor kids too. You okay. You tutor, right? Okay. Yes. yes. And I and I do tutor, and um, you know, and among tutoring, I do find that uh, a lot of children were being bullied. Yes. So um, I think that um, helping them mm -hmm. in that area will help okay. to build the self-esteem. And if I may read that poem, sure. it, could, it could help children sure. who sure. may uh, be in that crisis. Because what they need to learn or what they need to know is that mm -hmm. a lot of times the bullies are hurting themselves. Amen. And that's not taking anything away from them not bullying, uh, being able to bully you. Right. That should uh, be intervened. But... Um, a person who may be bullied, you need to know that you are a leader. Mm -hmm. So this poem was written for those children who just feel helpless. Mm -hmm. I'm a, I, and it's called Bully. I'm an oppressor, tormentor. I throw my weight around. I mm -hmm. seek the so-called weak and bulldoze them straight on down. Mm -hmm. If you are strong and fearless, I will leave you alone and don't even look your way. But if you are shy and timid and have no limit, you will be my prey. I intimidate and lurk and seek who I can devour. If you challenge me and tackle me, you strip me of all my power. Mm. Bully is my name, and I appear to have no shame as I work my strategy. I rise early and stay late and enjoy browbeating as company. I push and shove and hit and chase and call you out your name. You ask me to stop. I will not until you drop. I tell you I have no shame. Mm. Offended and, and bruised, violating and feeling used, you slowly walk away. But somewhere down the line, you are redefined, and now it's a brand new day. You rise and shine, and one more time, you meet me along the way. But this time is different. The antagonizing is lifted when you call the mind when you call out the mind game I play. You read me well, so very well, and see that I am the one who's really insecure. I try to hold strong my reputation, but not for long, because you're no longer the one to lure. But you don't stop there, you're willing to share the symptoms that describe my demeanor. You are now the one strong, and it won't be long before everyone sees the true leader. That's wonderful. So just keep your head up. Just keep Amen. your head up and, and make sure to tell and share with your parents. Don't be afraid to tell the teacher. Let someone know. Speak out if you're being bullied. If you're being bullied, uh, speak out. And then I do have, Helen, if I could share, there is a... Um, uh, a hotline. There's a sure. national hotline mm -hmm. uh, 
telephone number where you can call for uh, bullying and sure. and, and if you uh, okay. well if you go online okay. uh, under the national hotline for uh, bullying you will be able to Praise give that God. telephone Praise number God. I what? thought I had put it here but I don't that's all right it. did uh, while you was teaching did uh, any of the children ever come up to you regarding bullying uh, did you see some of the kids getting bullied while yes uh, well what we would do in my classroom mm -hmm. I would interact and intervene with the bullying problems okay. as soon as they arose Praise and uh, what I would do was I would have the children sit down and we would have okay. chit chat time Praise and God. a lot of that prevented the bullying because uh, the whole goal was to mm -hmm. build the child's self-esteem and that even works with their reading skills their math skills and okay. all of that Praise so God. if a child feels timid okay. and afraid okay. then they can't learn mm -hmm. and uh, everyone has the right to an education and, and be able to go to a setting and feel comfortable without Amen. worrying about someone picking on Amen. them. So Amen. we would have a talk and we would sit down and this was pre-K right. and we would sit down in a circle and if they felt uncomfortable about mm -hmm. talking uh, in front of other children right. I would ask them to come and tell me in my ear and they would and we would solve that problem. We would do so, uh, problem solving skills. And uh, at that age, they're learning to write. So okay. I would have the two children go to a table okay. and they would draw about oh. what was going on. Okay. And that's also increasing their storytelling skills, their language mm -hmm. art skills, mm -hmm. and their vocabulary mm -hmm. as well. Praise so um, a few issues are being solved and resolved just about t you know, tackling one subject. And uh, they learn to, to um, express themselves. Okay. And if they didn't tell me, they told their parents. Okay. And if their parents came and told me, we got to the bottom of that. Because, uh, you know, bullying can stay with somebody for the rest of their lives. Right. And if we that's have right. that, that's a society that's problem true. now. That's right. Some of the, the, the bad things that are happening yeah. now in our society, if you look in, and do the research, mm -hmm. some of those people who have survived, that's when you right. go back to their childhood, a lot of them have been bullied. Yeah. So if it's not intervened, right. it's, a very, it's, a, it's a prominent uh, epidemic, uh, notorious problem going on now in the school system, and it really, really needs to be addressed. Amen. Well, you know, I, I'm sorry that you retired. I'm glad <laughs> that you retired because the school system need more mm -hmm. teachers like you that care. Yes, and thank love you. the children. Yes, you know, I truly because do. a lot of people they just go to work just to get paid. Yes, but uh, it's a blessing to have someone to love the children because see, some of the children when they when they leave their home, their homes are not happy. Yes, because sometimes mm -hmm. they get bullied by their own peers and at, at home. Yes, this you is see true. what I'm saying. Yes, and then they get bullied. So I've heard on the news uh, several times that. Kids get bullied, so they commit suicide. Yes, and, and that's terrible. That's you know? terrible. And and that's not of God. We, we rebuke that spirit in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. But you know, I I told you, viewers, she's <laughs> excellent. She's excellent in everything that she does. But the next time when I have her on my show, which will be soon next year. Uh, we're going to get an update on all all of this. And what's your, do you have a number for your tutoring? Yes, um, I may be contacted at uh, Pencils and Paper Skills to Go. And the telephone number is 810-892-3924. Again, that's 810-892-3924. Or you can reach me by a Gmail at pencils and paper skills to go at gmail dot com. Woo! <laughs> I'm excited. I'm excited. <laughs> you, you know how many do you have grandchildren now? Yes. How many? Yes. Uh, I have one grandson. Oh. And uh, with my husband, we have five grandchildren. Oh my yes. goodness, that's yes. beautiful. That's beautiful. Well, I'm not gonna tell you about my guest next week. <laughs> it's gonna be a very special guest too. You know, but I'm excited um, about what you're doing, Thank and you. it's a blessing, you know, and like I say, every one that comes on this show, God tell me, and you know, he said, have Blanche, and I said, oh my God, that's why I asked you, you know, I, and Such people are coming up to me. I said, well, God didn't tell me to have you on my show. <laughs> I'm, I'm very blunt about that, you know. And, and I thank God. God is awesome. He's, he's ooh, I just love him so. And I thank him for Blanche, and I thank him for all the 
the the guests that I've had so far. I've only been here, I would say, a month, and God is really blessing my socks off, and and He's going to continue to bless my socks yes, off because he's a mighty guy. yes, He is mm-hmm. because I'm doing exactly what He tells me to do because I run to pay my tithes, you know. I yes. run to to get into scriptures every day. I run to the altar every day, and I and I thank God for that too. Now, uh, Blanche, um, do you have another poem, right quick? I know we don't have yes, much time. Yes, uh, I do. Um, uh, I think we only have uh, a few a uh, few seconds to okay. go, okay. so uh, we don't have that much time. So maybe next time okay. you, you can do it. But listen, viewers, I want you guys to to have a wonderful, safe Christmas. Mm-hmm. And remember, Christmas is about Christ. It's, that's our gift. That's our gift. It's Christ. And... Keep focusing on that. And remember what I told you last time. There's no such thing as black life matters. All life matters. We all came from God. It's only one God. One God. And he's the father of us all. Black, white, Jews, Japanese, Mexican, all of us. And he loves us all. Now you got the devil too. He has children too. And that's why he stirs up all of this confusion where hatred and killing and and backbiting, that's where they come from. Jealousy, that's the devil. But see, I'm a child of the king. I know who I am. Blanche knows who she is. God has blessed her with all of these talents now. She has a lot of talents that God has blessed her with. And her husband has talents. Her grandchildren, her children have talents. And, and that's a blessing to be led by God. Viewers, I want you to be led by God and not by the media. Be led. I don't care who's the president, who's the vice president. It's nobody but God. God is in control of this world. He's getting in control of your life. For God I live, for God I die. It's nobody but God. God is the one that wake you up in the morning, not the alarm clock. All you got to do is put the alarm clock in a, in a cemetery and see how many people going to wake up. <laughs> Ain't nobody going to wake up at all. But I, uh, I wanted to say that, and I wanted to tell you now that Jesus is the reason for the season. And remember what I always say after every show. Jesus is doing a drive-by. You be ready because he's on his way to your neighborhood. So you get your house in order now. You get your house in order. You accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And do something besides sitting in that church in the four walls, you know. Be a fisher of men. Be a fisher of men. Go out and win souls for Christ. Get the young people. That's our future. That's our future. I I wouldn't know how to bake or do anything without God. I love you, Detroit. And remember, Jesus loves you too. And I'll see you next week. And that will be after Christmas. Merry Christmas. And God bless you all. Remember, I love you, but Jesus loves you more.